again to our Wednesday Bible study. We hope you're being, being enlightened and enjoying our study as we look at the life of David, King of the Jews. Now, in our examination of the process of the making of the King of Israel, we've seen some things that shaped David's character. By looking at the Psalms he wrote, during the various incidents in his life, we get a picture of how he felt during those trials. David is a man after God's own heart. And we need to remember that God not only looks at the outside, he looks on the inside and we can't fool him. So that means whatever he faced or whatever he did, his desire was to please God. Even when he sinned, he wanted to repent and get back in God's favor. David has seen the benefit of having God on his side. And he realizes that when I make up, make a mistake and I make God angry and separate me from God, I need to get back in God's good graces. Saul wasn't so honest or sincere with God. That's why the kingdom was taken from him. We saw God sent word through Samuel. The reason you won't be king anymore is because you did not obey God. Let's look at 1 Samuel chapter 30. And it came to pass when David and his men were come to Ziklag on the third day that the Amalekites had invaded the south and Ziklag and smitten Ziklag and burned it with fire and had taken the women captives that were therein. They slew not any, either great or small, but carried them away and went on their way. So David and his men came to the city and behold, it was burned with fire. Their wives and their sons and their daughters were taken captives. Then David and the people that were with him lifted up their voice and wept until they had no more power to weep. And David's two wives were taken captives. Ahinoam, the Jezreelitess, and Abigail, the white of Nabal, the Carmelite. And David was greatly distressed for the people spake of stoning him because the soul of all the people was grieved, every man for his sons and for his daughters. But David encouraged himself in Jehovah his God. He encouraged himself in Jehovah his God. And David said to Abiathar the priest, Ahimelech's son, I pray thee, bring me hither the ephod. And Abiathar brought thither the ephod to David. And David inquired at Jehovah saying, Shall I pursue after this troop? Shall I overtake them? And he answered him, Pursue, for thou shalt surely overtake them, and without fail, recover all. Isn't it encouraging when God gives you some, inf some direction and answers your prayer? Verse 9, So David went, he and 600 men that were with him, and came to the brook Besor, where those that were left behind stayed. But David pursued he and 400 men for 200 of both behind, which were so faint that they could not go over the brook Besor. And they found an Egyptian in the field and brought him to David and gave him bread and he did eat and they made him drink water. They gave him a piece of cake of figs and two clusters of raisins. And when he had eaten, his spirit came again to him for he had eaten no bread nor drink any water three days and three nights. And David said unto him, To whom belongest thou, and whence art thou? 
And he said, I am a young man of Egypt, servant to, Amalekite, to an Amalekite, and my master left me because three days ago and I fell sick. We made an invasion upon the south of the Chirithites and upon the coast which belongeth to Judah and upon the south of Caleb, and we burned Ziklag with fire. And David said to him, Canst thou bring me down to this company? And he said, Swear unto me by God that thou wilt neither kill me nor deliver me into the hands of my master, and I will bring thee down to this company. And when he had brought him down, behold, they were spread abroad upon all the earth, eating and drinking and dancing because of all the spoil that they had taken out of the land of the Philistines and out of the land of Judah. And David smote them from the twilight even unto the evening of the next day. And there escaped not a man of them, save 400 young men which rode upon camels and fled. And David recovered all that the Amalekites had carried away. And David rescued his two wives. And there was nothing lacking to them, neither small nor great, neither sons nor daughters, neither spoil, nor anything that they had taken to them. David recovered all. Isn't that what God said would happen? And David took all the flocks and the herds, which they drave before those other cattle, and said, this is David's spoil. And David came to the 200 men, which was so faint that they could not follow David, whom they had made also to abide at the brook Besor. And they went forth to meet David and to meet the people that were with him. And when David came near to the people, he saluted them. Then answered all the wicked men and men of Belial of those that went with David and said, because they went not with us, we will not give them aught of the spoil that we have recovered. Save to every man his wife and his children, that they may lead them away and depart. Then said David, you shall not do so, my brethren, with that which the Lord hath given us, who hath preserved us and delivered us and the, the company that came against us into our hand. For who will hearken unto you in this matter? But as his part is that goeth down to battle, so shall his part be that tarrieth by the stuff. They shall be part alike. And it was so from that day forward that he made it a statute and an ordinance for Israel unto this day. Look at the wisdom of David. And when David came to Ziklag, he said, of the spoil unto the elders of Judah, even to his friends saying, behold, a present for you of the spoil of the enemies of the Lord to them which were in Bethel and to them which were in the south, in South Ramoth and to them which were in Jatir and to them which were in Aurora and to them which were in Sipmoth and to them which were in Estimor and to them which were in Recall and to them which were in the cities of the Jerahmalites, and to them which were in the cities of the Kenites, and to them which were in Horma, and to them which were in Karshan, and to them which were in Athak, and to them which were in Hebron, and to all the places where David himself and his men were wont to haunt. All right. So how does David show wisdom? David shows wisdom, first of all, by inquiring of the Lord before going into battle. We saw that when Saul tried to inquire of the Lord after the Lord had left him, that God didn't answer. That made him resort to trying to pull up Samuel from the dead and talk to his spirit through uh, someone who was a practicer of the familiar arts. So David inquired of the Lord. I wonder how many things we have messed up because we didn't check and see what the Lord said about it. David's behavior is much like ours. It's good some days and not so good other days. He didn't inquire of God to raid the Philistine cities. He didn't inquire of God to go to march with Achish when Achish was gonna fight the Hebrews. But now his wife is gone. He's about to be stoned. He inquires of God. David's not perfect, but he maintains his connection with God. 
They come back and the whole city is desolate. All of their loved ones have been taken captive. The city has been burned. Their possessions have been taken. And David asked God, God, should I go get this? Should I go pursue these people who have taken Ziklag? Bible says when they came and saw the destruction and saw what happened, they wept till they had no more strength to weep. Imagine the anguish in their heart that they cried and lost and they lost everything. Cried and cried and cried till they had no more strength. The Bible said they were even ready to stone David. It's your fault. If we had been here, we would have been able to protect our goods and our family. But we were out running with you. So David asked God, should I go get him? They said, God said, go get him. I'll restore everything to your hand. They went so far, they got to the brook Besor, and some of them were exhausted. I imagine so, they just come from an emotional strain. They couldn't make the march. So David said, 200 of y'all stay here, the other 400 go with me, and we'll restore all. And that's what happened. They went and they, they found the, the uh, perpetrators, and they got their family back, they got the spoil back, they got their goods back, the things that these uh, robbers had been taken from other cities, they got all of that too. And so now when they come back, some of the guys that went say, hey, y'all just, y'all didn't do nothing. Y'all just stayed by the stuff. You don't get no part. They would say, nope, that's not how we're going to do this. We're going to make sure everybody, those who watch our stuff and those who go to battle, everybody gets the same part. Wisdom. Because now when he goes to battle, if he says, I want you guys to stay here and watch the stuff, no argument, because they know they're going to get a fair share anyway. David is showing he's got king, he is made of king material, but he's got to keep his connection with God. And we too will fail and forget and ignore God's will. But the worst thing we can do is sever our connection. I like to say, if you get off track, best way to get back on track is to stay close to the track. First John 1, 7, but if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanseth us from all sin. We've got to walk in that light. We've got to stay in that light, the light of Jesus. David shows wisdom by being grateful grateful to the Lord after his victory. And we see that he still had a connection with God because he thanked God for the victory. Then said, David, you shall not do so, my brother, with that which the Lord has given us, who hath preserved us and delivered the company that came against us into our hands. That's in verse number 23. So David knew he didn't get the victory. God gave him the victory because remember when he prayed, God's answer was, I will deliver them into your hand. So he shows wisdom by inquiring of God before he goes into battle. He shows wisdom by thanking God for the victory after he came out of battle. He shows wisdom by being fair to the soldiers left behind. He grants them the same share of the spoil as those who did the fighting. When you support the work, you share the glory of the work. And I want to say that to all my brothers and sisters, you don't have to be on the front line in a ministry, making sure that things are done and, and putting your hand to the plow. But if you support the work, these men were a support staff. Somebody had to watch the stuff but they were able to share in the glory of the victory. And when you support the work, you can share in the glory of the benefits that the ministry brings. And you can say, I'm a part of that. No contribution is too small to be noticed or needed. Now all will be willing to watch the stuff. David shows wisdom by sending gifts of the spoil to Judah. He sent gifts all around the land. The, the text says all of where David's men were, were, were wanting to go. 
so that they would be well received. These are David's men. He has sent us these great bounty, these spoils of war, and we're going to make sure that we take care of David's people. So it is said these are some places that helped him escape Saul, and he didn't forget them. David is showing wisdom. He's showing that inside he really does have the things that kings ought to be made of. Not only did he show gratitude for the help, but it drew support to him. Remember, we talked about in our lesson on friendship, David knew how to be friendly and to make friends. And here is the result of his kindness. First Chronicles chapter 12, verses one and two. Now these are they that came to David to Ziklag while he kept himself close because of Saul, the son of Kish. And they that and they were among the mighty men, helpers of the war. They were armed with bows and could use both the right hand and the left in hurling stones and shooting arrows out of a bow, even of Saul's brethren of Benjamin. For at that time, verse 22, day by day, there came to David to help him until it was a great host, like the host of God. So David is able to draw support from those around. These wise moves reflect the connection that David had with God. Even before he became hunted, he, became, he behaved wisely. Since we want to be the man or the woman after God's own heart, how can we maintain a connection with God? We must constantly check our connection. Check your connection when you don't seek God's guidance. Check your connection when you're not grateful for God's grace. Check your connection when you are selfish and not fair. Check your connection when you're not generous with God's gifts. All these things David showed, and it showed us how wise he was and that he truly was king material. We thank you so much for joining us in our study. We're going to look uh, next week at a little bit more of the wisdom of David in 1 Samuel chapter 31. Powerful, powerful, powerful chapter. Read ahead and, 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 and get, get acquainted with what goes on in the life of this great king in Israel. We ask that you would please share these lessons. Let others know about the Bible study that they can engage in, and it won't take all day. You can learn something about what thus saith the Lord. And we hope you'll tune in next week as we continue to look at David. Until then, as always, we pray you be careful and be prayerful. God bless you. Lord, I'm your child, Lord, and I need you.